So my name is Piotr Tyszko-Chmilowiec. <laughs> uh, and I <coughs> work with, uh, uh, with the Foundation for Sustainable Development, uh, as I was introduced in Wrocław. And uh, uh, I would like to tell you about uh, the program of uh, uh, roadside tree protection uh, that uh, we have created for, for Poland. The foundation is, a, is an organization similar to Arnika, and we have also cooperated in the, in the past and have uh, a lot in common. And in the bulletin uh, that you uh, find uh, uh, in, the, in, in your materials, you, you will see one of leaders of Arnika planting a tree for Václav Havel in a Wrocław Park, together with us. That was our initiative to, uh, to uh, celebrate the uh, an, uh, anniversary of uh, Václav Havel leaving us. Uh, and there is this Lipa, uh, Havlova Lipa uh, growing in Wrocław now. Uh, our first uh, contact concerning avenues was in 2010 at uh, Avenue Conference in Prague. Uh, and it was the first time I, I had beer with the friends of, uh, from Arnika. Thank you for that invitation and thank you for invitation for today. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, avenues are threatened also in, in Poland. And this is largely due to road modernization, uh, which uh, uh, does not take into account uh, the existence of trees. Trees are not, not treated as a part of road infrastructure as an asset. They are treated as, uh, as an obstacle. And uh, it's been particularly bad for the last 10 years. Krzysztof Worobiec, uh, who lives in Mazury, in North, northeast Poland, was the pioneer of avenue protection. He was the first to, to fight uh, in defense of, of, of avenues, and uh, he also organized the first meeting, uh, first seminar on, on avenues. I would like to pay respect to him. Uh, legal protection of roadside trees in Poland, in, uh, in short, uh, to cut a tree you, you need a permit from local authority, from the county, uh, uh, mostly from the common, from uh, the lowest level, sometimes from the county. Uh, the roadside trees are protected uh, in that uh, uh, before uh, issuing a permit, uh, it has to be consulted with the regional uh, environmental authority concerning uh, protected species. For, for, new, uh, for new road construction, uh, no permits are necessary, unfortunately, but nature uh, conservation requirements have to be satisfied. Uh, I began working for uh, protection of, of trees in, in the open landscape. It's not only uh, avenues, but also trees in the fields, trees uh, gr growing around people. Uh, I began uh, this in Badic Valley, which is uh, a, a pond area, a fish pond area north of Wrocław, 50 kilometers from Wrocław. And this is the largest fish pond complex in Europe, best known for its birds that use the, those uh, ponds. And uh, on the dams of the ponds, there are uh, numerous uh, uh, oak avenues or oak uh, rows of oaks. Uh, and uh, uh, th this, this area is also home to large populations of uh, hermit beetle and, uh, and uh, great Capricorn 
Beetle. Uh, or, or Longhorn Beetle. Ten Kozioruk, no, Cerambyx Cerdo. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, in 2007, uh, I initiated uh, a regional campaign. Let us plant oaks in Badecz Valley. Sadzimy dęby w Dolinie Badeczy. Uh, and it's still uh, running. There are people who keep planting uh, trees in the region. Uh, but after a while, I realized that uh, it's not enough to plant trees. You have to know them. So we surveyed, we inventoried uh, uh, the, uh, the avenues in uh, Balej Valley. And this is a map, and it was published. Authorities have to know that we know the trees so that they make good decisions for trees. And this experience, uh, also experience of working together with the authorities, led us to creation of this Drogi dla Natury, Cesty Pro Przyrodu, Roads for Nature program. The point is uh, that roads are for people, for cars, but they also are important for nature. And let us not forget that. Uh, so the basic assumption of the program is that road services created the avenues and they will save them. That's why we work with road authorities. And here on the picture uh, I am signing uh, a memorandum of un understanding with uh, the director of regional road authority in Wrocław. in 2009. Uh, a first really big pro project that we did uh, focused on uh, avenues as uh, habitats and uh, ecological corridors for the hermit beetle. It was supported from the uh, infrastructure and environment operational program, the same program that destroyed so many trees and National Environmental Fund. And we planted 30,000 roadside trees in three regions in, of Poland. Uh, and, uh, and these trees were under management of 55 uh, road authorities of various level, from uh, commune to national road authorities. Uh, we proved that it's possible to plant trees along roads in Poland. This is, an example. This is again Badecz Valley, uh, the places where we planted. This is the avenue uh, that was shown on the first slide, on, on the title slide, right here, an oak avenue. We planted mostly uh, lime trees and oaks, also some fruit trees from in, in uh, selected places. Uh, we did hermit beetle survey in, in, in the three regions where we worked and we found out that in this northern territory, Mazury Varmia, which, which, which is formerly uh, East Prussia, uh, uh, the uh, roadside trees were very important for hermit beetle. In other regions, not as much. Uh, now we <coughs> implement this sub-program within Roads for Nature called uh, lo uh, Local Campaigns for Trees. And it is supported uh, chiefly from uh, the National Environmental Fund, again, and the EU LIFE program. Uh, we do it in, in partnership with three Polish organizations and German partner BUND from, uh, from Mecklenburg for Pomer. Uh, the program consists of 90 uh, local campaigns over four years and uh, conducted in 90 communes. Uh, in each commune, we do uh, 
uh, a master plan for, for avenues. We conduct training seminars, two-day training seminars, and uh, uh, organize numerous seminars, conferences, international meetings. We also support grassroots initiatives uh, that defend trees and publish uh, manuals. Avenue master plans consists of uh, inventory of avenues and then formulating recommendations for their conservation. That is uh, uh, how many trees should be planted, what should be done with the trees, if any care should be taken care, should be uh, implemented, any, uh, any pr pruning, for example. Uh, also, uh, roads where trees could be uh, newly planted are identified. This is for the uh, commune Sus in central northern Poland. Trainings. We uh, organize trainings for roadside, road uh, authorities, for local authority, people responsible for, tr for trees, for uh, local activists that defend trees, for uh, anybody interested. Uh, the books that that uh, uh, I'm showing here are the materials uh, that uh, the, the training is based on. Uh, it includes, uh, uh, among other things, facts and myths about trees, and, and uh, including those, those facts that, uh, uh, that I referred to this morning about uh, uh, the, uh, the methods of tree surgery, which is uh, now uh, consider it outdated. Uh, we teach uh, about tree care, adequate uh, pruning. And this, you see, this is a, a good example of tree care because you cannot tell which tree has been already uh, handled. You see, a, a well, uh, well uh, pruned tree uh, is such that you cannot tell that it was pruned. Uh, tree assessment, uh, uh, avenue planning and, and planting. Uh, talking about tree assessment, we have uh, designed uh, with uh, a group of our experts a uh, visual tree ass assessment method accessible for people who don't have uh, specific uh, uh, specialist uh, education. Uh, uh, road authority uh, employees are usually technicians, engineers. They have never he heard of trees, <laughs> yet they are responsible for, for, for trees and for the safety of the people who travel. So I had this uh, experience that I was asked by the regional Authority, road authority in Wrocław for advice. They wanted to remove 35 trees and the, uh, the local mayor told them to go to the regional authority, uh, regional environmental authority to, to, uh, to obtain approval because it was a Natura 2000 site. And then they called me, I went there and I, re I, and I found out that of those 35 trees, only five trees uh, really were dangerous and had to be removed. Uh, and then I found three more trees that were not, had not been identified that, that should be removed. What it helped me to understand that many trees are, are cut because, no, just in case. So we decided Polish uh, road managers need methodology, simple methodology to and basic skills to tell a dangerous tree from the one that is safe. Uh, we used foreign experience, uh, German methodology of baum controller, also uh, British and, uh, and Italian uh, experience and prepared, uh, prepared a methodology that is now being taught at the courses. Uh, 
in those, uh, in those uh, local campaigns, uh, there's also education for children, education for local communities, uh, working with local uh, authorities, with the councils, with ca the councilmen. We try to help people understand trees better and appreciate them. We tell them wh why they are so important. And those 90 communes will be the centers for change, for uh, they will in, I, we hope that they will induce change in the whole country. They, they, they will be spread all over Poland. Now, a couple, couple cases uh, uh, from our uh, uh, work as, uh, as tree defenders. <laughs> uh, you see, the, the picture shows here uh, the same avenue before and after. And... Uh, uh, that was probably the first case then th when a mayor who ordered to cut trees was portrayed on, 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 on a na nationwide television channel uh, as, a, as a freak, as a, as, a, as a crazy man. Usually these are environmentalists who are, who are pro portrayed as freaks and crazy people. That was a success. Uh, the fact was that there was no good reason to cut these trees. And it was just ambition of, of the mayor who wanted to have a big road in a small village. But now, two good examples, small, uh, small successes among those that, that we, we have recorded. In Badaj Valley, uh, there was uh, 17 trees to be cut because of sidewalk which was to be built here along the road. Now we looked into this uh, case and we pr proposed an alternative solution. Very simple. If the designer uh, would, would go there and see the trees and appreciate the trees, he would propose this right away. Uh, a very simple way to save trees. Uh, this oak was to be uh, removed because of uh, pedestrian crossing, uh, which was designed just in this case. But you now you can paint pedestrian crossing a bit further down the road, and this was done. You see the, uh, the oak was home to Capricorn beetle. So it was doubly protected. Then, in the same village, this summer, a designer, an engineer, calls me and tells me, uh, look, the road authority told me to get your approval before they, uh, they accept my, my design. So we looked at it. Uh, we looked for solutions. Uh, these two oaks were saved through uh, moving the sidewalk to the edge of the road strip and uh, doing the, uh, the, the sidewalk, making the sidewalk of gravel at this section so that uh, roots are not impacted. Uh, plus uh, eco board, which is, you know, the, the sidewalk edge with, uh, with little impact where you don't have to dig uh, deeply and cut roots. There was this little uh, green space in Warsaw. It actually, uh, in fact, this is the place where I, where I grew up, where I played as a child. Uh, a very special place for me. Uh, and uh, the authorities proposed to cut uh, 22 trees to make this uh, park tidier. And the people did not want that. They got organized. They, uh, 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 they organized an, an event, a happening. Uh, it says, hello, I am a tree. Hug me. Uh, they also used uh, local media. Uh, and uh, we helped them. We asked a dendrologist to look at these trees. And it turned out 
Then of the 22 trees, uh, only four trees were evidently to be removed. And then uh, a meeting was held with the, with the mayor, uh, and uh, a meeting in which uh, uh, representatives of, of, this, of this local group uh, were represented. I went there and we had a good con conversation. And uh, what was agreed was that any further steps with the park will be taken in consultation with the people. So finally, only five trees were removed. And the other trees, well, you see, people in Poland slowly begin appreciating trees. They want trees for what they are, for being green, for shielding them from noise, for, for they like trees for produ producing hydrogen, for cooling uh, in, in, in summer, for giving shade. And uh, these trees, they don't have to be straight, they don't have to be very beautiful. Uh, they are loved for being trees. And this is a, a big change in, in, in the awareness of, of people uh, in Poland, particularly in bigger cities where trees are more, more valuable. However, this is changing. So the authorities uh, are only slowly learning that, uh, uh, that trees is the, the asset, something valuable. Now, a couple, couple initiatives uh, that go beyond uh, uh, the borders. That was an, uh, an idea first proposed in 2008 by Ingo Lehmann. Uh, uh, an officer in the uh, mecklenburg vorpommern ministry uh, and, uh, and a veteran of avenue protection in Germany. Uh, the idea was to, to cho choose uh, a border crossing and plant trees along this road on both sides. So this is one of the border crossing in, in nor northwestern Poland, from Poland to Germany. We are now working on this on this place, working on planting uh, a transborder avenue and under this slogan of Aleje Misto Hranic. And, and when we came here t t today, uh, yesterday with, with the Rota, we also passed through, th through, through a road, one of the little roads between, between, between uh, uh, Moravia and, and Silesia where we, uh, where we f uh, found places to, to plant trees. Uh, and this is, uh, to me, it's a very personal thing. I very much enjoy the fact that our borders are, are no, no more dividing us. This is a way to promote uh, trees, to promote avenues, but also to celebrate those borders that are gone, luckily. That's a similar uh, idea. We, we, uh, our friends from Saxony, uh, th they proposed this, uh, this project uh, con uh, concerning uh, an avenue cultural uh, corridor along uh, this, this uh, Via Regia route from, uh, mm, uh, from Dresden to Wrocław. That is still uh, a concept, but maybe someday. And, and we are involved in the uh, in creation of the of the group of people who who care about avenues for people from various countries. And uh, when you look at it, uh, Martin uh, Skalski is also there. We met a year ago in Rigen, uh, the island. Uh, and uh, uh, the occasion was uh, a meeting celebrating 20th anniversary of Deutsche Alleinstrasse, the German Avenue route. And one of the uh, topics that, that we discuss could, is could the Deutsche Alleinstrasse be extended into other countries? Uh, and as a European avenue route, could it be connected with uh, the Czech avenue route, Polish avenue route? That's, 
that's inspiring. We'll see. Uh, the next meeting uh, of the European Avenue Working Group should be this coming spring in, in Wrocław. This is what we propose, and we began discussing it. Dziękuję za pozornost. Také děkujeme a předpokládám, že budete mít nějaké otázky, takže můžete pokládat. Není tomu tak. A přece jenom dobře, jdu za vámi. Už jsem se chtěl divit, že by se nikdo na nic nechtěl zeptat. Zapytaj po maďarsku. A hogy lehet egy ember lenni, vagy tenni társaságot? Um, my question is how it's possible to be a member of this of this working group? Hmm? How it's possible to be a member of this working group? Uh, very, sim very simple. Mm, uh, this is not a formal group. Now this is just uh, the people we uh, that we found that are uh, that do things for for avenues and uh, uh, if you are interested in international networking for for avenues uh, keep in touch with us you will be included in the uh, in the mailing list uh, pr preparing for the next meeting uh, and uh, and you are welcome je to přesně takhle jednoduché, budeme určitě rádi, když nás bude více. Tak dávám prostor k dalšímu dotazu, prosím, chcete? Jo. No, děkuji, já, jsem, já bych se chtěl jenom zeptat, vzhledem k vašim kontaktům na Arniku, jestli dokážete nějak posoudit, v čem je legislativa v České republice lepší při ochraně zeleně proti Polské, anebo naopak, zase v čem je ta polská legislativa pro nás by byla inspirací. Hmm. Uh, it's uh, uh, I could not answer right away. However, uh, we have now a book in writing, uh, which is pre written by uh, an. Uh, uh, an experienced environmental lawyer, Professor Radetsky. And uh, one of the chapters there will be on the, on the Czech regulations for tree protection. And I hope to get uh, a good uh, insight from, uh, from that. Uh, in general, uh, I am not a lawyer. It seems that the regulations are, are similar. They provide similar similar level of protection, which is insufficient in both countries. Jestli bych já to mohl možná doplnit ještě z naší perspektivy, tak nám vlastně připadá, že ta legislativní ochrana v České republice je o něco silnější oproti okolním státům ale vlastně v každém státě se potýkáme s jinými praktickými problémy a tam vlastně se snažíme se vzájemně inspirovat, protože v České republice máme trochu jiné problémy než v Polsku a zase trochu jiné problémy než v Německu a ty většinou vyplývají vlastně z praktického uplatňování, z praktických postupů a vlastně z implementace té legislativy. Čili asi se nedá říct, že by úplně klíčový problém byl v těch zákonech, ale spíš potom jde o přístup jednotlivých vlastně úředníků a lidí, kteří rozhodují o o těch alejích. A tam, tam je ten rozdíl, ale je to spíš na úrovni možná jednotlivých obcí nebo okresů nebo krajů. Vlastně nedá se to na té celostátní úrovni si myslím, že není úplně ten klíčový problém. Teda aspoň nám se to tak jeví. Uh, uh, right, I, I agree with you. Uh, the, point, the point is to change the thinking of the people who are responsible for trees. And that's, uh, that's the, 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 the greatest task. Ano, to je na dlo, běh na dlouhou trať. <laughs> tak jestli má ještě někdo nějaký další dotaz, budeme za něj rádi, prosím. Já bych se chtěla zeptat, já když jsem byla asi před třemi lety v Polsku a jeli jsme křížem, krážem, 
tak nevím, jestli to byl jenom můj dojem, ale když jsem si všimla těch alejí, tak ty aleje byly hodně daleko od silnice. A tak jsem domala nad tím, jestli to je takový zvyk u vás, ale teď vidím, že tady jsou stromy usázený těsně u silnice, tak tomu tak trošku nerozumím. Ale bylo tam hodně alejí, které byly daleko od silnice. Jo, tak od stromu, teda od silnice. Aha. That depends on what on when they were planted those uh, planted in uh, 18th 19th century they were usually planted very close to the road as uh, as you see on this uh, uh, on this picture it's a it's an old uh, des uh, road design trees were planted next to the pavement with a protection, protecting stone uh, so that uh, the uh, carts don't, man, don't damage the, uh, the trees, right? Uh, those planted uh, in post-war uh, in uh, era, in the second half of uh, 20th century, and mostly they were uh, poplar trees, they were planted behind the ditch, uh, no, normally three meters away from the pavement at least. And they uh, uh, they are easier to to retain because they don't uh, they don't make the drivers feel uh, feel threatened. Although uh, this uh, this state of feeling threatened by the driver is beneficial because then drivers drive slower. On the other hand. Mm -hmm. Tak, děkujeme. Ještě někdo se chce na něco zeptat? Nechce. Já bych tady možná k tomu taky teda ještě řekl naší zkušenost. V České republice je v současné době problém s tím, a není to tady jenom u nás, je to i v dalších zemích, že se změnily technické normy. V podstatě to už není otázka přímo zákona, ale technických norm pro vlastně výstavbu silnic. A tam je dnes vlastně jako uváděna jako optimální nebo vlastně nějaká ideální vzdálenost stromu od silnice podstatně větší, než jak se ty výsadby koncipovaly dříve. Takže dnes je vlastně, pokud se někdo striktně drží těch norem, tak je vlastně velký problém vysazovat ale je v tom klasickém sponu, tedy aby vlastně vytvářely stromy klembu a vlastně jako některá, některá část vlastně projektantů a inženýrů se spíše snaží ty stromy vlastně vzdalovat, ale tím už nevzniká alej. Ta norma je vlastně není úplně závazná, měla by se asi jakoby v, v, při té výstavbě aplikovat, ale do značné míry záleží na konkrétních projektantech a silničních správcích a vlastnících pozemků, jak vlastně nějaký projekt třeba na rekonstrukci silnice nebo novou výsadbu ale je pojmou. Tak to, je, to se vlastně týká asi dnes, jako to je jedna z těch kritických věcí, které tam jsou. Tak vám děkujeme za pozornost, děkujeme Piotrovi za prezentaci.